consider a small list uh, not necessarily sorted all right and find the sum of all the elements in this list right and that's going to be very easy as you know all, all that we can do is create a for loop for i in range length of l okay we say sum equals sum plus l of i and we start with sum equals 0 right so you're familiar with this now right so I, I will not explain this in detail I'll simply go ahead and then print the answer let's see if it does if it is indeed 110 how do we check that type it manually 1 3 4 67 plus 18 plus 17 1 1 0 right so you probably are wondering why would we do this when the program itself is saying i'm just cross checking uh, you you can further ask me sir why do you cross check you can directly type like this and then find out the answer but then i'm teaching you programming sir why to do programming for something as simple as this when we can do it over a terminal like this or a calculator okay this is like saying um, the conductor comes and asks you for uh, your ticket and you show a pass and you also show a couple of tickets that you have bought just in case the pass um, is, uh, you know, uh, you, you lose the pass, <laughs> right? That's a standard joke. Uh, I, I suppose it's a PJ right now <laughs> in, this, in this context. But then you see the point, the point is that this list need not necessarily be this small. It can be very, very big, all right? Let me try writing a big list. L equals random sample list of range of some hundred thousand elements and then come on, i'll pick some hundred elements from here or maybe thousand elements from the ten thousand elements okay and what is to be done here i should say import random okay all right perfect so now uh, i will try to find the sum this l can remain like this or i can comment it not a problem i'll try to see if i can find the sum of this you see very quickly it shows us the answer in no time it showed us the answer the point is that certain things that can be done easily by a human being if things get complicated in terms of the input the human being will not be able to do it but the computer can do it but that aside what i wanted to tell you people here point to be noted is i use a variable sum and i keep adding sum equal sum plus LFI. I go slowly over the list adding one by one. So for example, sum equals zero and then sum equals zero plus one, sum equals zero plus three, sum equals sum plus uh, three, sum equals sum plus four, sum equals sum plus 67, sum equals sum plus 18 and so on and you get the answer. That is the logic that we use. The word logic means a technique through which you translate the typical human commonsensical intelligence to a piece of code so why are we doing this i'm doing this not because this is not done in fact this is done more times than uh, it was required so i did this because i'm going to teach you people something a little more complicated okay what we will do is write a piece of code to find the dot product of two vectors i mean it sounds complicated but i believe you all know what i'm trying to say it's very simple if in case i said x equals one seven three four and y equals eight six three and two the dot product of these two things is basically you take one multiplied by eight okay the dot product is simply one times eight plus seven times six plus 3 times 3 plus 4 times 2 it's a wise idea to put brackets otherwise you should be very familiar with operator precedence if I sound very complicated then you haven't watched the previous week's videos <laughs> as simple as that I nevertheless you don't need that right now I'm just kidding so what I do is dot product is equal to so much okay it is component wise multiplication and then you add things up okay print dot product and you get the answer 67 all right so but then i want to do it the programmatical way 
okay i want to do it programmatically how do i do that how do i put this into a for loop right now why are we why are we discussing this as as we have been uh, discussing as as we have been saying we are preparing you with a programming language okay so that you can understand the deeper delicacies of data sciences and in data sciences one very important entity that you will see over and over and over again is a matrix all right so for the next three four videos we're going to discuss about uh, a program a, a, a couple of programs that involves matrices okay for that i need to introduce you people to what is a dot product dot product simply means this it has some very wonderful meaning it basically tells you the um, angle between these two vectors if i sound very complicated don't break your head you will get to know of it eventually as you study more subjects so basically dot product of x and y is simply multiply them component wise and then add them it will be a simple small number so let me now try to write a piece of code which does precisely this and let me check whether i get 67 or not for that i'll first comment this and then go ahead and then type a piece of code how, how will the code look like for i in range len of x what i do is i multiply x of i with that of y of i and then add that to sum while i initialize sum to zero exactly the way i did the previous code i'm not going to explain more on this pause and then stare at this this is precisely doing what what is being done here but then but then there's an advantage here although it is three lines here versus only one line there's a huge advantage here if you can tell me what is the advantage let us see what has gone wrong here of course you should not print dot product you should print sum 67 yes it's the same answer but then if i come here and include more numbers okay this will not work this co code will not work you have to again uh, add 11 into 6 plus 72 into 62 here but then this you don't have to do anything and it works the answer is 4597 and now you understand why we use looping structures which are which we have told you already but but then i mean something in action uh, this is very fairly si sort of simple but we are going to get things um get to see things a little more complicated than this i'm going to take you all towards matrix multiplication that's sort of a pinnacle of using a nested for loop it involves some thinking it involves some uh, you know some uh, patient time that you must spend think of what's the logic and then try to write a code this is the first step towards it we just now finished a small piece of code for dot products also please note here the final uh, word of warning this doesn't work if these two things are of different sizes okay they should be of the same size in fact you can indeed write an if loop here and check if they are of the same size or not and then print out print a error message saying that they are not of the same size and that you are exiting okay all those things can be done but then we'll keep it simple and assume that they are of the same length anyways we finished with dot products right now let's go ahead and try to see a little more about matrices